You're listening to the National Oceanography Center's Into the Blue podcast, where we tackle some of the biggest questions facing our ocean today by speaking to experts and voices from the world of oceanography. Hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello, I'm Dr. Zoe Jacobs, and today I'm joined by Stuart Fairbairn to get an update on what Boating with Boatface has been up to in 2023 and what adventures it has in store next. So thank you for joining me today, Stuart. Hi. So we're going to start today with a random ocean question. So... One we have for you is, what is your favourite ocean and why? Um, my favourite ocean, I think, would have to be the Atlantic Ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the first time I was away with Nock on the ships was to the Atlantic, and I've been on a couple of other trips with Nock to, to the Atlantic Ocean. So I've got quite a lot of fond memories uh, being on ships yeah. uh, with my colleagues and the AUVs and the robots out there. So Cool. Yeah. So you are an operations engineer, is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell me a bit about your role at Nock? Yeah, so an operations engineer, I'm in the ALR team, which Mm -hmm. is the auto sub long range. Mm -hmm. So we um, maintain and prepare and operate NOx fleet of uh, very long range AUVs. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't know what an AUV is, it's an autonomous underwater vehicle. So they're basically these unmanned robots that we program what to do on the surface. Mm -hmm. And then we, we send out and it completes its mission without any sort of tether to the surface and without any input from a pilot while it's underwater. Oh, cool. So is that the L- ALR team as a whole? That's the kind of... Yeah, that's the kind of work we do. So yeah. um, Boating with Boat Face is, is an ALR. Yeah. And um, it's about the uh, the size of a, a bottlenose dolphin, three metres long. Okay. It weighs about 800 kilograms, which is like a very large polar bear. <laughs> um, and unlike many other EVs, the ALR works completely without a ship. So um, we can launch and recover the EV from shore. Uh, we pilot it from our laptops, mm-hmm. either, you know, that could be from a hotel near the deployment site or mm-hmm. it could be from the office um, or even from home. So we call this over over the horizon piloting. Okay. And the ALR is really um, sort of world leading in this type of work. So it's, it's a really good team to be a part of. Cool. Um, so all I can think of now is a dolphin and a polar bear, but what does it actually look like? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like um, a lot of sort of long sort of oblong shape it's bright yellow okay. uh, got a couple of wings on the side and, and the tail fin with a motor um yeah it's, it's a bit hard to describe sometimes yeah but, um, <laughs> if you get you look in, if you type in boat, boating with boat face to, yeah. to google images you'll get plenty of, plenty of pictures um and i think we might have talked about this before on previous podcasts but are they are they all yellow so that we can see them easily in the water that's right yeah, yeah. so the the bright yellow stands out really well against the sort of dark greys and blues of mm. the, the ocean so when you're when you're out there, you don't realize how sort of fast and empty it is. You think maybe it'll be quite easy to find it, but when it's a tiny little speck and there's mm. lots of waves, it can be quite tricky. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. <laughs> um, so, what are the main differences with AUVs? Is it something to do with how far it can travel? Um, so, an AUV um, compared to something like a, an ROV and a remotely operated vehicle, the main difference is the AUV is completely untethered. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's programmed ahead of time, so it's kind of an, uh, it doesn't have input from the pilot underwater. We don't speak to it. we can only speak to it when it surfaces. Got it, yeah. um, the ALR within AUVs uh, specialises in being this really highly efficient version. Uh, it can travel very long distances, mm-hmm. um, and we can sort of we can go further and get to places other uh, methods can't. So, for example, back in twenty twenty two, we went and took the ALR to the dots and ice shelf mm-hmm. in Antarctica. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's an area you, a, a ship can't get under the ice. Yeah. So something like an AUV and an ALR can reach that and get that data that you can't yeah. get through other traditional methods. Yeah. And we also specialize in, in traveling a very long distance. So our current yeah. distance record is um, 2,000 kilometers. Okay. So that's about the distance from um, from Paris to Kiev. Okay. And um, yeah, that's our, our record at the moment. Oh, cool. That's quite a long way, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so how how is it controlled exactly? Um, so when it's on the surface, we can program a mission into it and it'll have a list of behaviours and commands uh, that we want it to do, where we want it to travel, um, what we want it to do at different points. Mm. And then when we send the sort of go command, uh, that's it, it will dive under the water. And then a- after that point, we can't control it at all. It just, it will do what we've told it to do. Okay. Um, and, g- and gather the data. So it's pre-programmed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, I was kind of imagining someone in a control room, like just managing, like steering it along <laughs> as it goes. <laughs> no, not quite. We do have a control room, but we don't we don't steer it like yeah. that. No. Um, and why why are they so useful for ocean research? So they can they can reach places we we can't get with other methods. Yeah. So I touched on that previously. Yeah. Um, and they can give us much higher resolution data, and we can be in an area for longer um than traditional methods because with a ship you need to to you've got a lot of uh, people on that ship yeah a lot of fuel that you're using whereas the alr can be out there in the ocean and um because we can pilot it over the horizon from home without the need for a ship it can stay out there for a lot longer and and continue the science mission yeah um and I guess it's useful. So it's useful because it's collecting data on these places that we can't get to as easily. Yeah. And it covers more ground than a ship would probably cover, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah. So the, the, the two main selling points for the ALR are it's a lower carbon version of um, the, the sort of traditional methods that you might do with the ship. We can oh, do it yeah, for a lot less carbon mm. than, than that. And we can reach those hard to reach yeah. areas. Yeah. yeah. So. Can you run me through a typical deployment or does it vary depending on the mission? A uh, bit of both. So there are always similarities. We we tend to launch from uh, a crane on the harbour and we, we operate from um, forward operating bases. So that could be, uh, it could be a hotel nearby, it could be a shipping container on the harbour wall or it could even be someone's garage. And mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of over the horizon piloting, like I mentioned before. So yeah. we're just controlling it using our laptops um, and using the satellites to, to speak to it. Um, differences is every mission is going to be different based on different locations. You've got different weather conditions that we need to plan for and um, the different sensors we take on board. So we speak to the sort of scientific community to see what their needs are and what sensors they require for the, the what data they want to, mm -hmm. to gather. And then we make that happen by integrating those sensors into the vehicle. Oh, I see. Cool. Um, and have you had many successes with it so far? Yeah, we've had uh, quite a lot of success. Mm -hmm. um, for example, a couple of examples from last year, we were in Shetland. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two LRs in Shetland. One of them was carrying out a survey of a marine protected area. Okay. Um, that was on behalf of uh, DEFRA and JNCC, mm -hmm. which is a... Uh, Department for Energy, Food and uh, Rural Affairs, I think, and the yeah. JNCC is the Joint Nature Conservation Council, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds about right. So that was um, taking a, a survey of the seabed, and that's the type of mission you typically um, traditionally do with a ship. Right. Um, but the ships would use tens of tons of uh, fuel every day, right. whereas the ALR for the entire two weeks used the um, equivalent energy, because we use rechargeable batteries, mm. but it used the equivalent energy of just one litre of diesel, oh, wow. which um, in a car you might be able to travel about 10 miles, mm. but with the ALR on that same amount of energy, we travelled 300. So that's wow. about London to Edinburgh. Wow, that's really cool. Um, the other ALR in Shetland was um, carrying out the next milestone test of a... Um, uh, an automatic anchoring system. Okay. So there's a project called Decades, mm -hmm. and I touched on going under ice earlier. So the next step we want to take is to enhance our ability to stay under the ice for longer. Okay. So the Decades project and the anchoring system, this will allow the the ALR to latch onto the seabed and hibernate in a low power mode, and then wake up again later and continue its uh, its mission. And the goal there is to be able to stay under the Antarctic ice for an entire year. So it's really challenging, but we're making really good progress. And the trial in Shetland last year was uh, a really good sort of step forward with that design. So we we proved the system in uh, currents like three times larger than we're actually expecting mm. to see. So that's really good. That's really awesome. That's because that's one of the main problems we've talked about on previous podcasts is um, taking observations in really important areas like like under the ice mm. in Antarctica or in the Arctic. Um, so that sounds like a that would be a huge step in yeah. in ocean science. In yeah, it, it really help. You know, just being able to be there for an entire year yeah. and take <coughs> measurements as we go through the year. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, that would be amazing if if you can achieve that, and I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, so for the um, I was interested when you're talking about the um, when you're in Shetland and looking mm -hmm. at the MPA. So if normally a ship would take all of those measurements, and this time um, the ALR managed to do so. 
do you think it managed to achieve the same amount of measurements, more measurements than a ship would? Um, I think it's. Uh, it, 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 I think it probably took the same, or or, or probably a bit more. Maybe um, a bit, yeah, great. And the the sort of data we were getting, so um, we had the biocam system that was made by the University of Southampton, mm -hmm. which is a, an imaging system. So we had some really um, detailed images of the seabed because oh, cool. we were flying five six meters above above the seabed um so that's something that the ship just wouldn't be able to do unless it had exactly a yeah. different vehicle to do that yeah um so you could launch an aev or an rov from a ship but then um we c we've just proven that we can do it without the need for a ship at all yeah yes it's actually it's doing the job of the ship actually going a little step further as well especially with those um the images mm. that's great I imagine those that would be really useful when you're kind of monitoring the health of these kind of systems and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about any challenges that you faced? Um, just recently or in general. In general. Um hmm. So I mean it's always quite there's always an element of risk putting something into the sea like a like a, a robot, yeah. especially since it's uh, autonomous mm -hmm. um so you know we have to be really careful about how we plan the missions and what we tell it to do over the seabed um because you don't want it to get into a situation where it's going to hit something mm -hmm. or um you know or get lost perhaps so you, you need to have really good um sort of an idea of the area that you're going to yeah. to go to and, and and plan it really carefully yeah um when we pilot it we we usually tell it to come up about once a day so we can check in on it as mm -hmm. well and um, so that means we uh, need to then monitor the weather because if it comes up in really really bad weather it could then get damaged as well right yeah. so we have to kind of monitor that as we go along as well um, so in shetland for example we had the storms that were coming through and we had to um during the worst of the storms we had to tell it to dive under the water and kind of wait for a bit yeah. to, to wait it out because it's much safer deeper down yeah, where it doesn't course. get affected by the yeah. waves so much yeah yeah, oh, didn't think about the weather actually. I was thinking more along the lines of, of have you ever lost it? No, we haven't <laughs> lost it, and um, hopefully we, we never do. No. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> but um, but yeah, there, there's always an, an element of risk. We are really pushing the boundaries of what we can do with yeah. a, uh, AUVs, mm. and uh, we're always you know trying to go further and, mm -hmm. and do more. Um, but so far we've had you know no no disasters. Yeah, <laughs> and are they um? Not just boaty, but other ones, I guess. Are they able to swim against strong currents, or is it a case of? Because I'm imagining, like with some of the gliders, if they get stuck mm -hmm. in a current, it could be a problem. Yeah. So I think the it depends on the AUV, and uh, you can fight against currents up to a point, but yeah. um, the LR can't really fight that much of a current because mm. it's designed to be quite efficient and go quite slow. Yeah. Um, it will quickly get sort of overpowered by strong mm. currents. I think the gliders are are um even sort of they struggle even more with currents you yeah. can't really do much with the currents of the glider and then another AV like the autos of five that knock have is that's got more power Um, it's designed to go in just for a day or two and mm -hmm. um, it can fight a lot stronger currents because its motors are more powerful mm. but then um, it can't stay as long as the ALR can yeah so what's next then for Boaty in 2024? Have you got any exciting missions coming up? Yeah, we've got a couple. So the um, next one coming up for us is called Tech Oceans. Mm -hmm. So that's an EU funded project. It's approving trials. We've got two LRs going and we're loading, up, loading them up with a, a whole range of different sensors. There's um, lab on chip sensors on mm -hmm. there. And then there's the, uh, the NOC Roxy sensor, which is the robotic cartridge sampling instrument, okay. uh, which can collect um, sort of environmental DNA samples of uh, the water to see what's living there. So we've got all those fitted to the ALR there. And it's, it's about continuing to prove the ALR and, and AEVs in general as a sort of a capable platform for science yeah. so we can fit all these sensors and we can get really good scientific data from them. Yeah. Um, later next year, we have a project uh, called Biocarbon. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the first time we've actually launched from a non-UK port and come back to the UK because okay. we're going to Iceland. Ah, cool. So we're going to shore deploy from Iceland. Mm -hmm. The AUV is going to transit out to the central Icelandic basin. It's going to carry out um, some science objectives and then it's going to transit to the Outer Hebrides in Scotland for a recovery at shore as well. And if that's successful, that will um, break our long distance record by more than 50%. Mm -hmm. So for us, that's it's quite a big... Um, 
quite a big goal because it would be about 3,000 kilometers um, over about two months. And yeah, 3,000 kilometers is, I think it was uh, Belfast to Istanbul-ish types of distance. So it's a really long way. Yeah. So what would happen if it if that didn't work? Would it just stop working halfway on its journey or? Um, so we have um, a wide variety of, of behaviors that it will carry out if mm-hmm. it gets into trouble. So this could be, it could just uh, stop and come to the surface. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see what's happening to it over the satellites yeah. and we can see what is wrong with it perhaps and, and make a judgment on whether we can continue or not. Because mm-hmm. sometimes it might, it might come to the surface with an issue, but it's actually not that bad and we can yeah. continue. Um, if it really gets into trouble, it's got a, an emergency weight that it can jettison, which makes it much more positively buoyant and it will come to the surface. Um, at that point, we'd have to then recover it uh, with something with with a ship or, or something mm. like that mm. Mm. okay well fingers crossed yeah. it doesn't get into any trouble <laughs> hopefully <yeah. laughs> um so just to finish off then what would a successful 2024 look like for the alr team um so i've touched on the the biocarbon project if that's if we break our distance record yeah. then that's that's you know that's a really big achievement for yeah. us um we hopefully we won't lose any EUVs, so we'll still have six but we are actually planning to build two more. So okay. we're going to expand our capabilities there and, and come up to eight vehicles. Um, so yeah, we're just continually pushing the boundaries of what we can do uh, and what AUVs can do in general um, with this over, her, over the horizon piloting. Um, as I mentioned before, the ALR is really world leading in that sector. So we just want to continually um, innovate and, and see, see how far we can get it to go. Yeah. That sounds great. Well, good luck with the next year. I'm sure I will be hearing all about the successes <laughs> soon. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Thank today. you. Cheers. If you're enjoying Into the Blue, please make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss out on future episodes. New episodes are released every other Wednesday on all major platforms and are also available to watch on the NOC's YouTube. See you next time.